Hello and welcome to Edupedia World. So welcome to the tutorial where we will be um, we will be using keying to uh, make something cool. So uh, this is the video that we are going to be, going to be using. It's shot on a phone in 4K and I'm just going to cut this little bit out. So that's what we are going to be using. I'll take the footage, drag it onto this new composition and uh, here's our video. So let me talk you through the idea uh, with this. I want to um, track the footage and at a planet so that it looks like there's a planet behind the uh, behind the clouds. I also want to add some uh, like some shiny smoke or something behind the planet just to make it look cool. Um, so and since since the planet, uh, of course, it's outside our uh, like in our solar system. Let's say it is that. Uh, then it would be behind the clouds, and I wanted to, I want to place it right here. So that means I've got two options: either I can uh, cut out these clouds by hand, or I can use keying to uh, remove the blue areas and uh, leave the clouds intact. So. Uh, that's what we're going to be using. And that's why this is a tutorial using keying, because we're going to be keying uh, the sky. So let's first track the motion of this uh, video. Uh, let's zoom in and uh, find some spots to track. So I think this part right here would be one good place to start. And since we want uh, rotation and scale, we also need to place this other tracking point. And um, if you're not familiar with tracking, then uh, I would recommend that you go watch my series on uh, tracking. There you'll learn exactly what I'm doing here. Um, but I'll try and explain it to you uh, right now. So I've placed these two tracking points. And uh, in a moment, I'll just hit uh, analyze forwards and it's going to go through and uh, track the footage so let's do that and see how it goes there we go it has already tracked through the footage and if we look closely on these two tracking points then they're not slipping they're sitting exactly where we want them so it may actually have been an idea. Let's try and reset this. It may actually be an idea to put one of the tracking points in the position where we want to place our planet. So the planet is going to be placed somewhere up here. Therefore, I'll actually find a place up here that uh, we can track. And that way we are going to get some uh, better tracking data. So we'll take the other tracking point and maybe just choose the same location down here because that worked nicely. So I'll make these a lot smaller. So we're going to be placing it around here and the null that's going to be created will be somewhere around here, I'm pretty sure. So if you put it right here, then it's going to be uh, pretty close and there's going to be no slipping so I think this looks all right maybe make this one a little bit bigger and uh, since we're on the last frame we're going to be doing analyze backwards and I'm especially going to be looking at this point because I know this one down here is good so no slipping no slipping no slipping and there we go no slipping at all Let's do Control Shift Alt Y to create a null and call it tracking data. I'll edit the target to tracking data and apply it. 
to x and y. And uh, there we go, we've got our null. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, find a picture of a planet. So if we go into this folder, I've got this one uh, that I found on NASA's website. So just drag it into this composition and place it above everything. And uh, here you can see the planet. So it is this small because it's only uh, 1920 by 1080 and it's a 4K composition. So I'll choose this uh, tool, Control Shift Alt, oh, Shift and Alt, Control, and then drag like that. Double click and then just try and match this. Hold Alt and Control and Shift. And then we can just place it so that there is an even spacing around with the, the black edges. I'll go into the mask settings and add some feathering. 10 pixels, and then I'll also decrease the expansion. Now I should decrease the expansion even more so that the dark edges disappear. So I'll place it where I want it, somewhere around here. And um, I will also I'll call this something nicer, planet. And then I'll take the planet and I will parent it to the tracking data. And um, I've, all do I've done all of this in other tutorials. And if you are unsure of what I'm doing, then you can go back and watch. But what I've done is that I've made this planet follow uh, the tracking point. That basically means it's going to follow the clouds. But as you can see right now, it is in front of this large cloud right there. And then we want it to be behind. So what can we do? We can try using these different uh, blending modes. And uh, we will soon see that none of them actually work that nicely. This one works a little bit, uh, but they don't work exactly how we want it. And that's not what this tutorial about is. Tutorial is about. So let's now try and uh, use key light. So I'll take this footage and I'll duplicate it and I'll call this uh, uh, Luma key and I'll just solo the layer and then I'll take key light so I've added key light to this area uh, sorry to this layer and then I'll choose my key screen color which is going to be the blue right where I want to place the Right where I want to place the uh, planet, I'll just increase the gain a little bit, and um, I think this is about it. Um, I will then just unsolo this layer, and I'll take my Luma key and put it above the planet, and then I'll put it to alpha inverted. And as you can see now, if we solo our planet layer, it has been cut out where uh, the clouds are. And it now it looks like the, uh, the clouds are in front of the planet. So if we were to maybe decrease the opacity a little bit, then it kind of looks like the planet is somewhere in space. I will add a few uh, cosmetic effects. So I'll go up into layer, layer style, and then outer glow. I'll go into the outer glow settings and choose a blue color. And then I will 
scroll down and increase the size and increase the opacity maybe change the color because it's too close to the background if we solo this layer you can see the uh, this glow working so it's just giving some cool kind of halo to our planet and as you can see if I turn on and off it actually does something it makes it a little bit more shiny around the planet so if you go through you can see it's all nicely tracked and keyed throughout the video and that's exactly what we want. So another thing that I said that I wanted to do was to add a um, like a build of some energy or stuff uh, behind the planet. I'll try and maybe um, fill out some of this area, the blue area right here, with some cool kind of energy. So I'll do Control Y and call this energy. Hit enter. Then I'll add an effect called Fractal Noise. And there we go. Um, this is basically a, a cool uh, effect that creates weird kinds of noise. So this can be used for a lot of different things. And in this case, I want to do energy. So I'll set it to dynamic. And I will go into the transform. Just scale it up a little bit like that. I'll go into the sub setting, uh, into the sub settings and I'll change the sub rotation. And you should change this to the correct uh, setting which is somewhere around 180 degrees. You go, you're going to get this um, pattern and if I increase the complexity you're going to see a lot of cool detail and in my opinion this looks like uh, energy so somewhere around 10 you won't be seeing more detail so I've increased the sub influence a little bit and we can maybe now change the complexity, get even more detail. I think this looks very badass. So I'm just playing around with the scale and I think this looks quite all right. So let's just turn down the opacity just a bit and um, hit G and start drawing a, uh, a mask. I actually drag these in because they are outside of the layer and it's going to give a sharp edge. There we go. You can increase the feathering and uh, just increase the transparency while we're doing this. So, feather. Just going to add a lot. 521. I want to uh, go into the mask settings and uh, decrease the expansion just a little bit. Like that. And uh, just change the opacity a little bit. I, uh, I'm ready to start. Let's actually set it back up so you are able to see what's happening. Um, this energy layer is going to be put beneath the planet and um, we actually want to use this luma key once again so I'll copy it highlight energy and put it below um, I'll do alpha inverted once again 
and that means our energy is uh, below these clouds. Um, I'll go into this energy layer, create a new mask, Control shift alt and uh, I will fit this to the planet. Hit feather and just add a few pixels, maybe like seven, and subtract. And uh, that way, this part right here won't be um, this part won't be uh, what is it called? It won't be uh, won't have the energy. Okay, okay. Um, just increase the feathering a little bit. Let's make it more blended together. Like that, it looks nice. Um, let's take this energy layer and actually solo it. Um, set it to screen, that doesn't do anything just yet. So let's just leave it at normal. T, turn down the opacity just a little bit and add some uh, different effects. So I'll add uh, curves, add a little bit of contrast. I will change these uh, settings. I'll turn down the red value. I'll turn down the green value. And I will do some kind of color creation with these. I'll just play around until I get the color I want. I think this looks nice. Then I'll add a glow effect. And uh, for the glow effect to work, probably you want to go into project and then all click here twice. I just click and uh, choose 32 bits. Hit OK. And as you can see, it looks nicer right now. Um, that's because it's a 32 bit uh, effect as you can see right there. Therefore you basically have to have uh, 32 bits enabled for it to look properly. So I will just close these down so that we can focus on the glow effect. Um, I'll decrease the threshold, which basically means that almost everything will be glowing. Like this. And I'll decrease the radius just a little bit. Maybe like 5. And then I'll decrease the intensity a lot. Something like 0.2 maybe. Now you can see really see the energy, but it's not too much. Let's unsolo this layer. And uh, now you need this to be blended in with everything else. So energy, set it to screen. And uh, we will take the opacity and turn it down just a tad. We will also take this planet and add a curves adjustment and maybe even a glow as well. That way we can just increase the brightness a little bit. Let's turn off the glow for now. Increase the brightness to match uh, the surroundings a little bit better. I will enable the glow, turn down the, th the threshold and really decrease the intensity. And um, right now I'm actually looking at the, the outer glow that we added, and I think it's a little bit too much. So let's put it at like 50%. And I think this looks a, much ni a, much, a lot nicer. So something that I forgot. Let's not forget that. We need to take our energy layer and parent it to the tracking data as well. And now that we've done that, everything uh, 
will be moving together. And we've got this pretty cool animation. So let's just let this uh, render and we are going to see what we've got. In my opinion, this looks quite all right. It may look a little bit uh, unrealistic, but um, that is kind of what we were going for because nothing looks like this, so why would it even look realistic? And I think just when we reach 15 frames, let's just hit zero and uh, play back. So as you can see, this is what we've got. It's all tracked nicely, and uh, the clouds are in front of the planet, as they should be. So I'd call this definitely a success. And I really hope you learned something about keying and uh, other uses of keying instead of just a green or blue screen keying. So that was about it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching Edupedia World. Stay tuned for more videos.